Okay, our next speaker um, was hailed as a cybersecurity rock star uh, by the Financial Times, and her TED Talk, Hackers, uh, the Internet's immune system, has now been viewed over four million times. Um, she's not only an a, a internationally renowned expert on hacking and technology, she's also a very captivating storyteller. Um, now, I know what you're thinking. Um, elite level technical knowledge uh, with an affable demeanor and a winning smile. She's definitely treading on my toes. Um, so, but please give uh, Karen um, Elazari, aka the friendly hacker, a very warm welcome this morning. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Hannah. I can neither confirm or deny anything that Hannah just said about me. So good morning, everyone. Now's my chance to give you a view about the future of cybersecurity and AI from a hacker perspective. Scared? Perhaps you should be. But don't worry, I'm a friendly hacker and I'm here to talk you through a very fast ride into what's coming. And I think we can learn such incredibly valuable lessons from hackers. I learned everything I know from hackers ever since I was just a kid. So I was a very curious little girl, asking my parents a lot of questions. In fact, I got the encyclopedia instead of a bedtime story. And when we first got access to the internet in Israel around 1993, I realized all of the world's information was right there. If only I could access it. So I taught myself how to code and I taught myself how to hack so that I could find information and answers to my many burning questions sometimes on other people's computers. Now, my life changed for good when I first met my hacker mentor. Her name, Angelina Jolie. In 1995, she portrayed a fierce high school hacker called Acid Burn in a movie that captured my imagination. For the first time in my life, I saw kids like me, kids who were passionate about technology, using their power to shape the world. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the film, Angelina's not the bad guy. So I decided to become a friendly hacker, just like my Hollywood heroes. But life is not just a movie, and there are a lot of really bad guys out there. So now that I have your attention, let's dive into the intriguing world of malicious innovation. Innovations created by bad guys. Innovations that force us to adapt and evolve our thinking about cybersecurity. Innovations like vishing, Voice phishing, a technique that's allowed a US teenage hacker to subvert a billion dollar company's defenses in a 10 minute voice conversation. That led to a ransomware campaign against one of the biggest casinos in Las Vegas, an attack that according to their reports cost them $100 million in damages and lost revenue. And that hacker wasn't working alone. It was actually a very dangerous new trend, an unprecedented collaboration between Russian-based notorious ransomware gang Black Cat and US and UK native English hackers, Gen Z gamer hacker communities that are now collaborating with these organized criminals. And those criminals are recruiting such hackers, including on gaming platforms. So this is what's happening right now. And that particular type of crime, ransomware, is not just ransomware at all. It's RAS, ransomware as a service. It's a cloud-powered distribution model. And it's enabled criminals to evolve and innovate their product while recruiting other hackers to deploy and infect targets. So those hackers have to pay back a 20% commission to the original developers. And that model has been incredibly successful. In fact, last year, 2023, perhaps the most successful year ever for ransomware, more than $1 billion in actual Bitcoins tracked in the blockchain infrastructure, actual payments made. Now, these are some of the leading variants or strains or brands, if you will, of ransomware. You notice that big red one? That's the king of ransomware, the originators of the ransomware as a service model a group called Lockbit. Now, some good news here, folks. Just recently, through an unprecedented and fantastic collaboration between UK, US, and EU law enforcement, Lockbit was taken down. In fact, the National Crime Agency even took the liberty to redesign the Lockbit Darknet website. So this is what it looks like right now, and it actually has information and tools for victims to decrypt their files. 
They even went one step further. Last week, they revealed the identity of the master of Lockbit. So here he is, the ransomware kingpin himself. And if you recognize that face, that's a $10 million bounty waiting for you. Yeah, he's still on the run, but some other ransomware groups are coming up. So while Black Cat and Lockbit were actually taken down recently, and these are really fantastic, uh, fantastic achievements by law enforcement, you have to remember cybercrime is all about collaboration. So now there are up and coming groups like CLOP, Akira, APOS, and these groups go after eclectic targets, including many retail brands right here in the UK, European companies, American companies, Brazilian companies, even design and architecture firms. And they're really creative. They keep changing their game, which is how they evade detection. So this can seem really scary, but sometimes these types of attacks don't even need ransomware at all. All it takes is a carefully orchestrated, deep fake voice and video conversation to convince a finance worker to transfer $25 million in 15 separate transactions to scammers. I didn't believe the story at first, but it actually happened. This is the actual press conference by Hong Kong police explaining how an employee truly, genuinely believed he was speaking to his CFO and the entire team when authorizing these transactions. Alas, it was all deep, fake videos and voices. And they were generated using video from previous genuine conferences by that company. So perhaps we can excuse that person for being so fooled. But think about your next conference call. Think about how comfortable you are challenging people's personas, challenging your own senses, verifying truth from misinformation. For hackers, it is a new criminal renaissance an age where digital deception is easier than ever before. And what's common to many of these threats that we're faced with is that it's not about technology, your credit card details, ma'am, or your information, sir. No, it's about something we all have in common. It's about trust. It's about the trust that we place in our digital way of life, the trust that we place in one another, in the news that we hear. So this is what's at stake here. Now, that's very scary indeed. Hackers have shown us the path. Sometimes our adversaries can actually be our best teachers. They remind us we have to move fast and make decisions in order to be prepared. So I have three ideas for business leaders like you on what to do right now. It's not too late to be early adopters, but you can't take too long thinking about it. Are you ready? This is going to be very fast. So my first piece of advice. Think about how you can use AI, automate to augment. Don't replace humans, help natural intelligence win the fight. That means using AI to 10x your existing people, improve their cybersecurity skill sets and their expertise. Give them the capacity to do that special, creative, complex task of outsmarting bad guys, whether those bad guys are machines or clever criminals. And this is not just about engaging in one specific technology or practice. This is about preparing a future-proof workforce that can adapt, that can work with AI. Either you and your team educate yourself about this, or you will be outmatched by those who can, by those who do use AI for their benefit, whether they are nation-state adversaries or simply your competitors. This is an arms race. Second piece of advice for you. How can you harness that creative, chaotic hacker mindset? I know we dress in black and have alternative hairstyles, but that doesn't mean we are all bad guys. In fact, it just makes us cool, right? <laughs> it means that we can help you. There are a lot of friendly hackers, security researchers like myself. All of these brands and many others have learned how to actively collaborate with friendly hackers through a phenomena I've been championing for a decade. It's something called bug bounty programs. The technical term is vulnerability disclosure programs, but the gist is this approach has been changing the game because it's enabled companies to benefit from hackers' talent and it enabled people like me to do their best work legally while being recognized for their talent and their effort and without being marginalized or criminalized. So this is something that's gonna to contribute to our future workforce. 
Now, it goes way beyond software and deep into the heart of AI. Last summer, the largest hacker competition hosted a first-of-its-kind event hacking all of the large language models. More than 2,000 hackers competed to work on what they can do with these models. And that type of work called the Generative Red Team Challenge actually allows us to use hackers to simulate real-world malicious adversaries and to inform the design and development of any future models. So this type of thing gives me a lot of hope, not fear. Just like I said a decade ago, sometimes hackers can actually be an immune system for our digital age, and we need that. We need that type of impulse to change and adapt. Even the bad guys are forcing us to evolve. So my third and final message for all of us, we need to build our own digital immune system. And it happens in our homes, in our personal devices, and of course in our corporate networks. We need to focus time and attention, not just money, on building relationships, technologies, and processes that help us establish trust. And I'm sure you all agree, it kind of helps that we're all in the same room in person together, right? So, after all is said and done here today, I really encourage you to take this message home. Now's not the time to keep calm and carry on. Now's the time to adapt and evolve, just like hackers do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hack the planet!